We, the young people, and the people of this country, owe a debt of gratitude to him and his colleagues for what they have done in the last one and a half years in defeating Boko Haram. Please, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to El Marshal, the people of the country. Senator Bola Ahmed Tinubu and his wife, distinguished Senator Olure Emil Tinubu, the Vice President of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, Professor Yemi Osibanjo, Executive Governor of Lagos State, and other Executive Governors here present distinguished and honorable members of the National Assembly, Deputy Governor of Lagos State, members of the State House of Assembly, representatives of the service chief, chiefs, members of the diplomatic corps, distinguished ladies and gentlemen. I consider it a privilege to have been invited to deliver a keynote address as a special guest at the 9th Bola Tinibu Colloquium. I therefore express my appreciation to the organizers of this event for this singular honor. I am particularly thrilled at the theme of this year's event, which is Method in Nigeria, Use What We Make and Make What We Use. I am thrilled because it affords me the opportunity for the course of history. Right from 1903, when the Wright brothers conducted the first successful flight, air power has played a decisive role in combat. The first instance of the use of air power was during the war between Italy and the Ottoman Empire in 1911, when a young Italian pilot was ordered to throw grenades from his aircraft to strike enemy encampments. Other subsequent use of air power in battle were successful was where the successful German bombing of London during World War I, the German blitzkrieg operations of World War II, the Luftwaffe demonstrated the doctrine of control of air power and support to surface forces with so much efficiency that it stunned the opponents into submission. This must have spurred Winston Churchill to observe, and I quote, not to have an adequate air power in the present state of the world is to compromise the foundation of national freedom and independence, unquote. That statement, distinguished ladies and gentlemen, holds true until today. More recently, in the Falkland War between Argentina and Great Britain in 1982, the decisive battle that determined the fate of the islands were fought in the air. Again, air power proved to be the most decisive factor that brought the Gulf War of 1991 to a speedy conclusion. The Gulf War lasted for 43 days, out of which the ground offensive took only five days as a result of a successful air campaign mounted by the coalition forces against the Iraqi forces. Furthermore, air power was fundamental to the enforcement of no-fly zone established by the United Nations Security Council over Bosnia-Herzegovina in 1992 during the Yugoslav War. Back home, air power has also played a decisive role in bringing conflicts to speedy resolution right from the Nigerian Civil War when the Nigerian Air Force was launched into battle barely two years after its establishment. Since then, the Nigerian Air Force has successfully used air power to project Nigeria's interests during the Nigerian Chadian conflict of 1983 and the ECOMOC operations in Liberia and Sierra Leone. So impressed was the one-time ECOMOC field commander, General Victor Manu, with the efficacy of air power that he stated, and I quote, in any modern operation, you can never underrate the use of air power. You either have it or you don't go into operations, unquote. We are all witnesses to the recent swift deployment of our troops to Gambia 
which brought the political impasse in that country to a quick resolution. The swiftness of that deployment was only made possible by the availability of serviceable air assets. Nigeria, Kopibaku, Nigeria faces several internal security challenges, ranging from militancy in the south-south, pipeline vandalism in the southwest, cattle rustling in the northwest, and Boko Haram terrorism in the northeast. The Nigerian Air Force has successfully deployed its air assets in conjunction with ground troops to end or reduce some of these challenges. For instance, air operations conducted in our repo by Nigerian Air Force platforms successfully ended pipeline vandalism in that country. Here is a short to show the effect of that. The timely delivery of spare parts at reasonable cost must be assured. However, the Nigerian Air Force is ordinarily compelled to rely mostly on foreign original equipment manufacturers for the supply of spare parts and usually at exorbitant rates. Besides, as a service, we are all aware of the focus of the federal government in promoting local content, homegrown technology, and innovation as a principal means of preserving the nation's foreign exchange earnings. Accordingly, the Nigerian Air Force currently places much emphasis on research and development as a way of building indigenous technology, technological capacity. It is against this backdrop that I will be speaking on Nigerian Air Force research and development efforts towards self-reliance, achievements, and future deliverables. We know that the effectiveness of the Nigerian Air Force in the long term largely depends on the extent of the growth of its home-based technology. The aim of this paper is to highlight key dividends of the Nigerian Air Force research and development efforts. To achieve this aim, I shall look at the foundation of indigenous research and development efforts in the Nigerian Air Force, some products of Nigerian Air Force research and development efforts, and then finally conclude on future deliverables. Let us now start by looking at the foundation. In the Nigerian Air Force, a key requirement for the fulfillment of our strategic mission of ensuring the integrity of Nigeria's airspace is the availability of sufficient aircraft for air operations. The Nigerian Air Force, therefore, has different aircraft for different types of air operations. The pictures of some of these aircraft and their roles are shown on the screen. It is not worthy that spares and components that are essential to the serviceability of aircraft are not usually manufactured in Nigeria. It was thus the norm to source for all the required parts, only from various overseas original equipment manufacturers. Aside from the habitually exorbitant cost of importing these items, delivery was often delayed, thereby resulting in prolonged downtime for our aircraft. It became obvious that the Nigerian Air Force had to innovate if it must continue to effectively and efficiently fulfill its role. In realization of the foregoing, the foundation for innovation efforts in the service was laid when the Nigerian Air Force Research and Development Policy was formulated. Accordingly, all I had to do on assumption of the office was to strengthen the research and development capacity of the service for large-scale research activities. In pursuit of this goal, we established the Air Force Research and Development Center in October 2015 for basic and applied aerospace research and development. The center was to undertake other Nigerian Air Force strategic research and development commitments. And thereafter, all the officers who had undergone various postgraduate programs in aerospace vehicle design at different universities, as well as those talented officers in the area of aerospace research and development, were redeployed to this center in Kaduna to form the nucleus of Nigerian Air Force research activities, and they were given the necessary mandate. Nigerian Air Force also introduced inter-command research and development competition. Another step taken by the Nigerian Air Force was to sign a memorandum of understanding with 22 selected Nigerian universities and research institutions. This was in consonance with one of the key drivers of my vision, which is employing strategic partner, uh, partnership with ministries, departments, and agencies for enhanced research and development. The other key driver that is germane to this presentation 
is reinforcing a culture of self-reliance and prudent management Secret to the successful signing of the Memorandum of Understanding, various research and development cells comprising resource persons from selected tertiary institutions and Nigerian Air Force personnel were then formed. The cells were attended, assigned the task of addressing different aircraft and related maintenance challenges based on identified competencies. Our experience so far has shown that there are highly talented resource persons in Nigeria's tertiary institutions. The sustenance of these successful partnerships with these institutions have had and will continue to have positive impacts on the aircraft serviceability in the Nigerian Air Force. This will in turn enhance our ability to project air power towards contributing not only to the resolution of Nigeria's current internal security challenges, but security challenges within the West African sub-region. Apparently what Nigeria needs is to successfully harness her rich human resources, appropriately motivate them, and mandate them to come up with desired results. Now a brief look at what we've been able to achieve, the products, starting with the hydraulic accumulator for helicopter caution. The hydraulic accumulator diaphragm is a very important component of the MI-35 helicopter gunship, which is one of the main platforms being employed in the Northeast. Aside from being very expensive, the diaphragm requires frequent replacement to assure safe conduct of flight operations. Oftentimes, the MI helicopters become grounded due to faulty hydraulic accumulator diaphragms. Efforts made to procure the diaphragm from the manufacturers of the helicopter revealed that it was scarce to source and very expensive. The Nigerian Air Force eventually had to procure six diaphragms only at the cost of about 106,000 US dollars. That situation led to the commencement of in-house research on the production of the diaphragm. At this rate, each diaphragm Causes about 17 points, uh, 17,666 uh, dollars, 0.67 per one. This translates to about 5.5 billion per diaphragm. And each aircraft carries two, which means we need about 10.1 10 10 million to procure just two di diaphragms. In the course of research, the Nigerian Air Force collaborated with some mechanical and robot technologies outfits in the country resulting in the production of the first prototype. Ever since the production has undergone many modifications, and I'm glad to announce that we have now produced a better version of the one from the original equipment manufacturer. <laughs> at a cost at a cost of about twenty-five thousand naira. imports the diaphragm and our MI-35 helicopters are never grounded again on account of the diaphragm. Let me hasten to add that the successful production of the diaphragm, which has been patented in 2016, has the potential of impacting on the nation's economy. For instance, the local suppliers of the needed raw materials as well as the local manufacturing company are profiting from this venture. Next is resolving the incompatibility issue uh, on the Augusta 109 helicopter. The Augusta 109 helicopter is a light utility helicopter that is frequently employed in intelligence, surveillance and reconnaissance role in the Northeast and other theaters of operation. The helicopter's camera and its multifunction display, which displays various aircraft parameters, were integrated by the original equipment manufacturer. However, with time, a conflict arises between these two systems, with attendant adverse effects on our operations. The foreign firm, which was contacted to rectify the slack, submitted a bill of 158 million naira, an amount that the Nigerian Air Force considered as being prohibitive. Consequently, the Nigerian Air Force, looking inward, set up a research and development cell and tasked them with resolving these conflicts. The committee was able to successfully separate the camera from the multifunction display while providing an additional monitor for the camera. Both of them now work independently 
without any operational hitches. And the Air Force paid 5 million naira. The next is a bit interesting because I'm going to talk about electrolyte and the battery of a fighter aircraft. The F-70 NI aircraft is a fighter aircraft deployed in deep interdiction hole in the Northeast. Among the challenges faced in the operation of the aircraft was the maintenance of the airborne alkaline battery supplied by the original equipment manufacturer. The battery had a service life of one year, a shell life of two years, making its durability very poor. The battery also required regular charging and topping of its electrolytes, which had to be procured from overseas. The impression given by the manufacturers was that the electrolyte had special additives that could never be tempered with no source locally. Meanwhile, the corrosive nature of the electrolyte made it extremely difficult to import, as shippers were always reluctant to ship it, thereby leading to increased aircraft downtime. To resolve the problem of the electrolyte, which rendered most of the batteries unusable, the Nigerian Air Force commissioned a research and development team in collaboration with Illinois State University in Makodi. The research team was able to successfully produce a replacement of the electrolyte for the F7NI aircraft batteries. It is gladdening to know that we do not import electrolyte for the F7 aircraft batteries. <laughs> now to production of anti-skid system for the Alpha Jet. For some time, the Nigerian Air Force has been experiencing challenges on the anti-skid system of the Alpha Jet, which is another platform that is actively engaged in the counter-exigency operations. The anti-ski system is connected with the braking system of the aircraft and will usually result in the grounding of the aircraft if faulty. The major challenge before now with rectifying anti-ski system related snags on the aircraft is the lack of test bench to test the, 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 the ski that has been repaired, the anti-ski system that has been repaired. Ideally, test benches are used to confirm the functionality of a system that has been repaired prior to installation of the aircraft. However, the Nigerian Air Force was being compelled to test the anti-ski system in situ, thereby sometimes inadvertently damaging other components on the aircraft. Towards resolving the anti-ski challenge on the Alpha Jet aircraft, they now collaborated with Abubakar Tafa Balewa University in Bauchi, Amadou Bello University, and University of Maidukwe. Resource persons from these institutions alongside the Nigerian Air Force counterparts were able to design and produce a test bench for the Alpha Jet aircraft anti-ski system. Today, our challenges with the anti-ski system of the aircraft have become part of our history. <laughs> now to the company which has invested in the production of brake parts and rivets needed to overhaul the Alpha Jet aircraft brakes. <laughs> The company is now able to mass produce the needed alpha jet aircraft brakes. With this, we are sure of getting the required brakes at an affordable price, the right quality, and in a timely manner, having involved an indigenous company. <laughs> then, the manufacturing of a manned aerial vehicle. The modern trend in military aviation is the employment of a manned aerial vehicles in various missions. Not to be left behind the Nigerian Air Force through its OLE initiative, OLE here stands for Optimizing Local Engineering, was able to manufacture an unmanned aerial vehicle. The prototype unmanned aerial vehicle named Bulma was designed and developed for intelligence surveillance and reconnaissance operation solely by Nigerian Air Force officers. The unmanned aerial vehicle produced when fully operational can remain airborne for 8 to 10 hours, flying at an altitude of 10,000 feet and a cruising speed of about 102 kilometers per hour. Now, to, finally, to weaponization of combat aircraft. <laughs> Through indigenous efforts, the Nigerian Air Force has bolstered its research and development initiatives in the area of armament technology. These initiatives have led to major breakthroughs that have impacted positively on the Nigerian Air Force counterinsurgency operations in the Northeast. Notable among the Air Force towards self-reliance in the field of armament are the weaponization of three Alpha Jet aircraft whose weapon systems were reconfigured locally 
to carry not only Western Block weapons, but to also be able to carry Eastern Block rocket launchers. Similarly, we have weaponized three EC-135 civil helicopters. Another weaponization program that was successful is the reconfiguration of the L-39Z8 basic trainer to play an offensive role. The outcome of this effort was tested in Makodi Air Range, as shown on the screen. Finally, to future deliverables. There are other ongoing research and development projects which I cannot discuss because of limitation of time it, that are going on in collaboration with various local organizations and institutions. These projects include the production of a manned aerial vehicle through the use of indigenous technology for Nigerian Air Force and other government agencies, production of prototype of multiple aircraft for Nigeria reverse engineering of most armament and associated equipment. Other projects are shown on the screen. We are mindful of the fact that the success of these ongoing and future research and development projects will depend a lot on the commitment of our personnel and our various partners. Nevertheless, the significance of political support cannot be overemphasized. We therefore solicit a continuation of the support which the federal government has been so generous in giving. In conclusion, the various feats achieved by Nigerian Air Force through indigenous research and development efforts, in collaboration with various Nigerian organizations and tertiary institutions, have no doubt impacted positively on aircraft availability for diverse air operations, particularly on the ongoing counterinsurgency operation. Besides the local innovation, are assisting the service to overcome total dependence on foreign vendors, thereby reducing cost of equipment, acquisition, and maintenance. Here in lies the benefits of innovating locally in partnership with relevant stakeholders. I therefore seize this opportunity to appreciate the numerous partners of Nigerian Air Force, particularly our universities and polytechnics, in its quest to, for technological achievement and local innovation. I would equally like to commend their sense of patriotism, commitment, and enthusiasm. At the end of this madness in the Northeast, the names of our partners will be written in gold for their contribution in making Nigeria a safe place. We will not rest on our house as we forge ahead with other ongoing and future research and development projects towards the development of Nigerian Air Force and the nation at large. Thank you for listening.